Hi, my name is Damien Flynn, an Infrastructure Architect and MVP for System Center Cloud and Data Center. Welcome back to recording three in our foundation laying series, focusing on SharePoint 2010. We continue on our support components after addressing in the previous two recordings for our domain and our SQL environment. This time we install our SharePoint server which is going to be utilized for hosting our portals and for our web dashboards through Operations Manager, Configuration Manager and Service Manager. And to get the prerequisites sorted for this new server uh, we are lucky enough to have a utility provided as part of the SharePoint installer which will grab directly from the Microsoft site each of the modules and components needed, download those and install them on our behalf. The only requirement that you have is a good broadband, some patience and a cup of coffee. I've speeded up the recording for brevity and time sake so that we don't have to wait through this uh, process but set yourself away probably 15 or 20 minutes for this to complete itself naturally. Once the installation has complete, the summary screen will list off each of the components which were downloaded and installed and also identify whether those installations were successful or if issues had been encountered for us to go back and re-review. Now we can proceed with the actual installation of our SharePoint software and uh, launching the installation wizard we are initially greeted with the requirements to provide a product key. The product key helps uh, SharePoint determine if this will be an enterprise or standard install. So grab your key and insert it and uh, agree with the normal obligatory licensing terms. The next step on the installation wizard is to determine whether we're deploying a server farm or a standalone. I could have chosen a server farm which would also allow me to install a single server environment with the additional option of selecting which SQL server to use. For my lab I have selected to go with a standalone installation which also configures and installs a SQL Express uh, specifically for this uh, SharePoint service. After a few moments the installer will complete and we can select the option to run the configuration wizard. After a few moments the configuration wizard presents itself and uh, before we begin it gives us a warning to tell us that during its execution it's going to stop and start the Internet Explorer and SharePoint services a number of times. As this is a clean install on a brand new server this is not particularly relevant to us. For brevity, again, I have speeded up the recording. Um, however, this uh, process probably will take an average of maybe 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the speed of your uh, virtual machines. Once the wizard is complete, we can launch our Internet Explorer. And the first greeting we get from a SharePoint is to select the template that we're going to use for our site. I'm going to just go with the default team site as a configuration work we will do a little bit later on and uh, as a result I'm also going to go with the default groups which control the access to our actual SharePoint site. Modifying these as you like will allow you to control who has uh, visitor, editor and uh, configuration permissions over your SharePoint site. Great, we're almost there. With SharePoint now installed and working, we can focus on applying the last of the updates to the environment, including uh, Service Pack 1 for SharePoint 2010. This service pack is available to download from the normal Microsoft locations and will take a number of minutes to install. I've speeded up the recording session um, just to demonstrate the actual exercise. However, there is no real interaction required other than a mandatory reboot once the installation has actually completed. After our server has completed its reboot cycle, we can launch our browser and visit our brand new SharePoint site. Investigating uh, different areas within the site, including my settings to get information about the user account that has access, and much more interestingly, on the site actions where we can validate how to relay out and add additional functionality to the site. One of the first things that will become apparent to us is the rich interface available uh, utilizing Microsoft's uh, Silverlight. So we'll go ahead and install the Silverlight runtimes uh, to in 
After Silverlight is installed, we can go back, relaunch our web browser, and uh, this time around, if we head back to the site actions, take a look at the uh, more options, the layout is completely different with a much more rich experience. We'll spend more time in SharePoint later on, um, but for now, you've completed the third part of our library for building the foundation for the Microsoft System Center 2012 environment and the private cloud. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed this movie and we will meet you again as we start on the main stack for System Center.